What happens inside a downdraft gasifier above the combustion zone and in a semi-coke oven for charcoal production? These processes are the same. Let's see how they go and what the output is. A guy from the US will be showing the process, thank him for this video. And I yours truly, a longtime gasifiers fan, will be explaining. The link to donate to me is in the description below the video. In the video, we can see that the wood is heated in a closed container. This is called pyrolysis. The fuel is heated in a closed container like in a kettle. There is a tube attached for the gas to escape. The process goes at 550 degrees in all classic charcoal or pyrolysis furnaces. This is the empirically found optimal temperature for semi-coking fuel. At this temperature, almost all volatile substances, gas, water, and tar, come out. Why is this temperature optimal? Some volatiles should be left in the charcoal, this makes it a little better than after coking so that combustion and gasification processes will go better. At the same time, this fuel will no longer give tar. Semi-coking leaves about 20% volatiles in the wood, whereas the wood contains about 82-88% to of volatiles before this process. Although there is about 6% of hydrogen in wood, semi-coking can extract it all out and just over 3% remains. There is 44% of oxygen in wood, but about 20% remains in retorts, and 5-10% to in fires and furnaces, after semi-coking. The remaining 20% of volatiles is useful because it increases fuel activity during the combustion process compared to the fuel that was coked at 1000 degrees. The latter contains almost no hydrogen or oxygen. Only carbon with ash and a minimum of volatiles remain. Such fuel would be worse than the semi-coked one in terms of reactivity. But at the same time, despite the usefulness of volatiles for reactivity, they are harmful in terms of caloric value. Mendeleev discovered that every 1% of oxygen reduces fuel caloric value by 26 kilocalories. We see how the burner is heating the fuel, and moisture is beginning to escape from it first. You can it as a whitish haze. The tar is also coming out together with the moisture. It looks also like a whitish haze. The tar is micron-sized. This means that the gas or water molecule is enveloped in a thin tar film, and it travels through the pipeline in this form. The wood is still giving off moisture for up to 200 degrees. But after 200 degrees, the chemical decomposition of wood begins. You can see how the wood is starting to turn brown and dark. It's the volatile substances that are starting to come out. Oxygen and hydrogen, bound in the fuel, are starting to come out. When oxygen comes out, it takes useful carbon with it, so two gases, CO2 and CO, come out. There will always be three times as much CO2 as CO. Besides when oxygen comes out of wood it also takes hydrogen with it. Soviet scientist Dobrohotov found that half of the wood oxygen will always turn into water. That is, 22% of the 44% of oxygen contained in wood will always come out as water. If we add hygroscopic water, absorbed by the wood, we get a colossal amount of water, 22% chemical and about 20% hygroscopic. This is why it is more than enough water released from the wood. And those who want to add water to a gasifier to get more caloric gas are simply breaking the process by cooling everything with excessive water. There is already a lot of water in the wood. Even after passing the incandescent layer and turning into 16% hydrogen due to the reduction reaction, more than a glass of unreacted water still remains in one cubic meter of gas. And totally, one kilogram of wood at 20% moisture yields 2.2 cubic meters of generator gas. You can calculate how much water comes out with the gas. You can also see the black tar. Its case is much more complicated. It contains about 300 chemical compounds, light and heavy water-soluble and insoluble tars, as well as tars that are easy to rinse off, and those that can only be rinsed off with lye. The latter, for example, is the ones that glue valves and engines of novice gasifier enthusiasts. It can be removed with lye or commercially available engine tar removers. The effect is the same. In addition to the tar, a whole range of organic acids, such as formic and acetic acids, come out. They are much more potent in combination than separately. Useful gases, methane, hydrogen, carbon monoxide, and a few higher molecular ones, come out in the form of volatiles. If you rinse this gas from carbon dioxide with cold or monoethylmethylamine, which is easier, you get a pretty good gas with a caloric value of 3,500 to 4,200 kilocalories. Let me remind you that the caloric value of natural gas is 7,600 kilocalories. 
but there is not much useful gas, only about 10 to 15% of the wood mass. About 30% of charcoal, but a lot of water and liquid tar remain. This method produces about 200 grams of tar per 1 kilogram of wood, i.e. 20%. You can certainly use it. In the USSR, tar was a desirable product for the petrochemical industry. Today, tar can only be used to glue briquettes or to be fed back into the gasifier. But this tar contains a lot of water, and it has to be evaporated first. In general, you have to build a whole refinery, which is not profitable. Gasifiers do not have this disadvantage, they are designed to turn everything into gas as fully as possible. See you soon.